Hey everyone, this is Fix Reef, and today we have an Apex AFS or automatic feeding system up for repair. This is one of those modules that was added to an Apex, even to the classic Apex uh, controller. This is a very simple, very straightforward module. Um, not a whole lot going on inside here, but I haven't had one of those on my channel yet, so I figured I'll add it for content. Somebody may find it useful. So here is the problem with this unit. The owner said that uh, this uh, feeder does not work if plugged into Apex uh, in manual feeding mode, meaning that if you press the manual on button, it does not um, come out, it does not retract, it doesn't work. Besides, also, it looks like if uh, if they plugged it into this left outlet over here, the Aquabus outlet, it works just fine and the LED lights up, but if they plug it into the right one, there is no light um, and the unit just does not work. So, uh, what could be the problem? I already have a couple of ideas of what's going on inside, but uh, I wanted to just plug it in as it is and just observe uh, what is actually going on, reproduce the problem, also show you what might be um, wrong or what might be going on here. First off, I'll plug it into my test Apex head unit. I'm going to start with um, the good outlet here on the left. So plug it in. You can see that the light's going orange. Finally it turns green, meaning that it's connected to the head unit and communicating with the head unit. So now I'm just going to go ahead and attempt to turn on the feeding mode. I would expect it to come out and start spinning, but it, um, it does nothing right now. Uh, the light is still green. So that's not working. Now, one thing that I can try is, uh, we all know how weak Aquabus power is. So I'm just going to go ahead and attempt to uh, attach a lab power supply to this unit and see if with the assistance of the 6 volt power, external power uh, for this unit, it would actually work. It's blinking green. Let's give it some lab power. It's still. Okay, now it's solid green. Everything's good. Let's now turn on the feeding mode. All right, you can probably hear the noise. It's coming out. It's got all kinds of debris inside. Spins. And then goes back in. Lab power supply is not really um, registering a whole lot of current consumption, so that's good news. Um, but uh, regardless, without the power supply, with the power supply disconnected, um, it will not do the automatic feeding whatsoever. Now, let's attempt to plug it into the other outlet. So the LED is off, plugging it into the right outlet. And the LED stays off, meaning that the unit does not catch the 12 volts coming from the um, Aquabus, from the head unit. So um, I think I've reproduced exactly what uh, the customer um, uh, said this, pro this unit has problems with. Um, so let's um, take it apart and see what might be going on inside. Well, it comes apart fairly easily. Um, it's very, very tiny motherboard or main board. So we have the two Aquabus ports, the power. Um, what else is here? What else is of use? So I can clearly see the main controller over here. This, given the proximity, is probably the... Uh, actually, no, right here. This is the, um, the CAN transceiver. That's the voltage regulator. And or maybe this is actually a MOSFET. This might be a MOSFET. Uh, this is probably a voltage regulator, a couple of basic capacitors, diodes, that type of thing. So nothing, not a whole lot. Um, let's look at this under the microscope and, uh, and see if we see anything, anything wrong with this. I am not seeing a whole lot here. The board seems 
fairly clean, a little bit of residue of some kind over on this side, but not a whole lot. So there is something obviously going on. So let's take a closer look. Okay, so hopefully you can see this. Like I said, fairly clean. I am not seeing this is definitely a voltage regulator here from diodes incorporated. Um, uh -uh. Mm -mm. Yeah, I can see a problem. I think I see what the problem is. Yeah, you can see that there is uh, significant corrosion inside of this USB port, or aqua bus port. Uh, there is actually blue or green rather residue there that suggests that the copper has been corroded off and that you can see also the same going on between that and this capacitor as well over here. So um, quite a bit of corrosion. Quite a bit of corrosion that took uh, at least some copper. So we'll have to remove the connector, see what's going on with the capacitor as well nearby, and and uh, at the very least replace the connector. And this makes sense because that's the connector where if you plug in aqua bus it just does not work. And also, even if you plug it in to the other connector over here, which looks very, very clean. So even if you plug it in into this guy, they're still connected together. So um, a short on this one will cause a problem, uh, even when connected on this. Okay, so let's start uh, with replacing the connector or removing the connector first. This is a nice USB connector that has uh, three points of um, actual securing it to the uh, to the main board. Most of the connectors have two at best. This has three, so if we look on the other side, it's one, two, and three. So that makes this connector nice and secure. I like that selection that, uh, that Neptune did. But now we have to take it out. So we have seven points altogether to remove. Um, and I don't really care about the connector itself. I just want it out. So first we are going to just um, dilute the unleaded solder with some leaded solder and use, see if we can use hot air to remove it. This is going to go in a vise. And see the best angle probably be this. All right, so let's add some layer of solder to this. Soak it real well. Bridges, but that's okay. And let's try to use hot air to remove it. And it comes out. Okay, now that the connector came out, you can kind of see the problem. It looks like we have at least one pin missing on here that uh, is consistent with the corrosion that we saw earlier over on this side. Let me bring this up closer. So yeah, one pin's missing. That's the power pin. Um, data pins are still there. Ground pin's still there. But, um, but this connector is definitely bad. So we'll need to replace it. All right, now that we have it out, let's clean up the pads. Okay, I think we got all of them, and looks looks like new, at least on this side. All right, let's flip it over, see what we have on the other side. Yeah, a bit of a mess. You can see that corrosion did a number on this side, but I'm curious if we can just clean it up, um, and it will all look good. Some of the corrosion came off, but I'm not 
too crazy about the problem with one one of the holes here, which is this one. A lot of stuff here. So I'm going to take it under the microscope and see what uh, what's going on in there. It may have to be... Okay, from this we have a nice view um, of this whole area. In fact, we have a decent view of the capacitor, and I think the capacitor is just fine. There's a little bit of corrosion over here, but and I will add a little bit of solder to, to, to cover it up, but um, I think this is just fine. However, over on the connector side, so from here we can actually see fairly easily what's going on here. So there are two um, two uh, pins in the middle. These are data pins for Aquabus. They go around and connect just like this. So we'll need to make sure that those are actually conducting. There is a little bit of corrosion. But it, they seem to be intact other than just a mess on the um, surface. However, this so this goes over to the power. Copper seems good. Just quite a bit of corrosion around the actual well. I don't have high confidence in the well itself. On the surface it's not terribly bad, but the well might be um, corroded out. We'll need to investigate. And the other side, let's see what the other side of the same looks like. The other side is actually perfect. The big question is, does the well conduct? And even if it does, um, is there enough copper to conduct well and conduct enough um, of current? All right, one way to find out is to see if we can get to copper from each of the um, side of the traces. It looks like there is actually quite a bit of copper on there, on one side anyway. The other side doesn't look as hot. Yeah, the other side is definitely disconnected from the well. Right here, there is no connectivity to the well on this side. A little bit of connectivity on this side. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just repair this connect it really well to the well. And we'll call it a day. Okay, let's add some... Um, Alright, so let's add some flux. And some solder. Now I'll just need a good conductor. You run it through the well. There should be enough room to um, put the USB connector in as well. That's great. And now connect it over to the other side as well. And try to avoid the capacitor. And the data pins for that matter. That looks real good. 
Mm, time to remove the rest. Actually, before I clean up, I'm also going to um, add some solder to that um, partially corroded part of the capacitor. That's great. All right, so this is what we have so far. We have a trace or a wire going down the well. So we're going to be able to connect that uh, on the other side to the, um, to, USB to the USB connector. We have a couple of exposed traces here that I will need to make sure that they're insulated properly and not connecting to the power in any shape or form. Having the data pins being so close to the power pins makes me nervous. Looks like we're going to be OK. Let's see what it looks like on the other side. All right. So the, the wire is out. Let's pull it to the side. The big question is, am I going to be able to get the USB connector through? So let's get the connector and try to fit it in before I seal everything up. I plugged in the connector. It's, this is a brand new connector, same type as before. Um, it fits real well. So I'm going to seal all everything on this side, cure it with UV curable mask, and um, and solder the connector on the other side. Okay, let's cure it for a few minutes. Okay, everything's cured, everything nice and clean. Now let's put the connector in. All right, it went in nice and easy. Um, all we have to do is just solder it together. I will have to remove some of this wire once everything's done. But for now, let's solder it in. Let's start with larger holes. They will need a lot more solder. Great. And now for the pins. Now, for the um, pin with the broken well, uh, what's critical is con connecting the pin to the um, wire that goes through the well. It doesn't matter if it connects to the well as well, but it needs to be soldered to the wire really good. This looks real good. Look, just like new. Just like new. Now we have two really good connectors. They look symmetrical, they look clean, they look well. Now, one last thing before we connect everything and test is to make sure that now um, shorts have been introduced or still exist. So let's try this. So these two are symmetrical connectors, so I would expect uh, these two to connect. So let's see. This is good, and it's not shorted to any other pins. Now, this is good, and once again, not shorted to anything. This is good, and not shorted to anything. And finally, this connects, and not shorted to anything. All right, I think we got it. One last thing. Looks like one of the wires came off. This came off the motor, so I'll need to connect it back in. This is kind of silly, but you can see why it came off. It was never soldered. It was just wrapped around um, the pins on the motor. So 
Oh, Apex. Oh, Neptune. Looks like getting to the motor requires removing the back gearbox. That's what the back gearbox looks like. Really straightforward. Let's get the motor out. And solder the wire back in place. So they literally just wrapped it around this connector here and never actually soldered it. We're still going to wrap it around, except that I'm just going to make sure that it stays there. So if you have a feeder that sometimes does not um, consistently run, now you know why. A five-year-old does a better job connecting wires than Neptune. That's better. That's actually going to stay in there. All right. Time to reassemble. If I remember this right, Neptune actually did not design this feeder. I think, and I could be wrong on this, but I think that they just bought an existing design that was a standalone feeder, and they added their own board to it so that it talks to the head unit properly. Okay, so I believe that this needs 6 volts. And of course, it will need Aquabus. We've repaired this connector at the top. All right. I can kind of see the LED um, going from yellow to green over here. So, um, connections established. Now, I don't know how well this test is going to go because there is a sensor that's supposed to see the gears shifting. So let's um, let's turn it on, see if it works. I will hold it together. And it's working. It worked. Um, real quick testing the other USB, although I haven't worked on it, but just to make sure it's green as well. Okay, both of the um, Aquabus ports are working. The rest of it is working as well. Great. Okay, so let's review. So originally one of the Aquabus ports wasn't working on this. Uh, now the whole lot else was broken. Uh, but the Aquabus port was definitely, or USB port, was definitely corroded. You can see that one of the pins on the original port got removed. I have nice replacement uh, ports for this one. That they are, and they have these three connectors to secure it to the board, which I think is a very nice feature. It's kind of hard to find that type of connectors. Most of them have, you know, two pins that uh, you can secure to the board, not three ones. We also found out that apparently one of the wires just going into the motor was never. Uh, sorted together and we just wrapped around the, the pin, uh, the motor pin, so I had to fix that too. Um, but now this uh, automatic feeder is working again. This concludes this repair. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.